Hello everyone, my name is Bradley, I have a Brad Taste in Music, and today I'm really excited to be ranking the top 50 global songs of Spotify. You may be asking Bradley, why are you doing this on Spotify instead of doing something like Billboard? Because Spotify is easy, it's right here. You just click on the songs, okay? Plus, I use Spotify all the time. Alright, it's a more relevant platform for me, and let's be honest, Billboard, eh. I'm going to be excluding uh, specifically songs where it's the entire album just kind of being placed here because of the amount of plays. For that, I'm only going to be listening to the most popular track off that album. Just in case it wasn't clear, we're reacting to all the songs and we're starting at the bottom of the list. This isn't the ranking yet. The ranking will be at the end of the video. Okay. Continue. This is an idea that I've wanted to do uh, even before I had a channel on YouTube, so I'm really excited to get into this. We're gonna be doing it in reverse order. Uh, so let's get started. First track we have here is... Okay, so it's in Spanish. Let me guess, it's gonna turn into reggaeton. Yep, it's that trendy reggaeton sound. Okay. A song. Is it over yet? Nope. Sounds like every other song. Yeah, this is uh, this is what's trendy. All right, I think I've heard enough of this song. Uh, this is a terrible way to start this. This pretty much represents everything that I don't like about the reggaeton wave. You know, this sound is like, hey, let's have a good time, let's party, let's hang out, and it is. It's that party atmosphere, but. Uh, if you're not specifically in that vibe, if you're not in an environment where this works as background music, then it's agonizingly boring. I'd probably give this a low shrug. This is definitely going to be a bit of a change of pace. Uh, I don't know why the fuck this is here. I don't know why this song is popular right now. Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah, of course it's fucking Stranger Things, dude. My god. Dude, it's not fair that this is in the playlist. I mean, it, it definitely doesn't have the same vibe as everything else will, but holy shit. Oh my god. I've never heard this song in full, so I'm super excited about this. I'm loving it. Oh my god. Oh, the drums and the watery guitar. What a ch- this, what an amazing change of pace. Rolling in laughter, obeying my master. Um, Master of Puppets is one of the best metal songs I've ever heard in my life. Uh, yeah, and the fact that it's here is almost cheating, so let's just pretend that this is a, is a fluke. Because realistically, this is not a pop song. It's not a song you're gonna hear on the regular radio, and it literally is only here because of Stranger Things, and in a week it's not gonna be here. But for this week, I mean, my god, this is a fucking blessing. This song is, I, I honestly would say, near flawless, if not flawless. Next we have Are You Entertained featuring Ed Sheeran, a song by Russ. This is definitely going to be a change of pace. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Okay. <laughs> what a shit, what a shift. He sings all right here. Okay, Ed Sheeran rapping here kind of sounds like Justin Bieber on the song uh, Maria I'm Drunk, straight up. I think it's easy to just say, oh, you know, Ed Sheeran, white boy rapping, but for a pop song, he's actually doing a really solid job at fitting it. Um, sounding actually okay here. Like, he's got a decent voice to make this work. He's got a good staccato. Are You Entertained is actually a very solid pop song. I feel like Russ is kind of toning it back in terms of the very pretentious bullshit while mentioning accomplishments, not really doing it in a rubbing it in your face kind of way. I think that the first time that I heard Ed Sheeran over this trap beat, I immediately kind of wrote it off, but as soon as he actually has a rap verse, I feel like I was genuinely surprised by that. He's taking his singing talents that work for like his music and actually like integrating them into things that work with rap and making a really solid um, pop rap song. Honestly, putting together something that if I heard again on the radio, I wouldn't think twice about it. I'd be like, this is okay. Ed Sheeran rapping too. The fact that it is done, at least tastefully, is something that makes this song memorable. It's a risk, and I think it was done really well. Okay, sounds familiar. 
Two hearts in the fast lane, we have big dreams. Callum Scott's literally your friend's cousin. Production here is really solid. Very catchy. Honestly, the bass is really nice. The, the little clicks in here work pretty well. Ooh, guitar is also really nice. Guys, it's okay to admit that you like something that's catchy. You don't have to be so insecure about it, you know? Um, I thought that was actually a fun song. I can imagine, yeah, if it's overplayed, you hear this shit all the time. I mean, the song is literally designed to be an earworm, but it has a really strong melody. It follows a very simple formula that is honestly really well executed. I think that the beat's really nice. A lot of little details in there, uh, there that keep it feeling fresh. Again, that guitar, uh, feeling like it really adds a lot to the texture. I overall had fun with that one. Next song is called Ferrari by James Hype. Okay, another dance track. Okay, that's very honest. Oh god, okay, here we go, it's building up to the drop. Let's see what the drop does, you know, it could save it. Ooh, I like the bass. Oh my god, that is well produced as fuck, dude. You guys gotta understand that the person producing the song and the person writing the lyrics could be two completely different people. This song was written by like 26 people. I'm not surprised. I just think that the writing kind of sucks. Even though it grew on me a little bit as it went along, as the vibe was so strong and the drop just had such a nice layer of bass. My God. I want your hands on my body. You make my heart beat fast. Ferrari is terrible and tacky. Uh, when it does fall into the background, it, it's fine. Give it a shrug. Shivers by Ed Sheeran. Ah, this song. I kind of like this goofy, plucky beat that kind of reminds me of like some PS2 era like soundtrack stuff. It's kind of like a uh, idle farming simulator type beat. Yeah, the hook is catchy. It's not that I'm in a forgiving mood. When you listen to pop music, it's not the same as like putting on fucking Radiohead, dude. Like you gotta understand what you're getting into. If you're listening to pop music and you're just trying to dissect it, like everything needs to be this extremely meaningful bullshit, then you're honestly setting yourself up to have a miserable time. You gotta try to get the most enjoyment out of it and look for the for the bright spots. Put me back together. The lyrics are stupid, but I mean, for the most part, they fall in the background. If people were complaining about the plucks being too loud, I actually like the fact that the instrumental is overwhelming and taking over the part of Ed Sheeran because I feel like it's the opposite on a song like uh, Shape of You, where the bad lyrics of that song are really the highlight. Um, but this one, being radio filler, works in its benefit with the ridiculously bad lyrics. Don't judge pop songs less hard just because they're pop songs that's weird. No, it's not. You just appreciate different things about pop than you do with something like singer-songwriter, indie rock kind of crap. Don't underestimate the fact that, like, Ed Sheeran is just a small cog in this machine of a song. The amount of songwriters on this shit's probably insane. To make something that actually sounds this earwormy and catchy, which I think is to this song's benefit, as I feel like Ed Sheeran's voice alone, not a big fan of it. Um, the lyrics, I don't really like all that much, but I feel like the way that the melody comes together on this song is really catchy. It sticks. Like, I can see why this is a hit. I think the production's fine. I actually like the plucky beat. I, I feel like it's fun, right? It gets your spirits up, which honestly makes me look at this song in a much looser light. I don't hate this. I'd say that in terms of Ed Sheeran's songs in terms of Ed Sheeran hits. This is a catchy one. I'm sorry, and by that I mean Ed Sheeran, uh, you're garbage, okay? It's a zero, okay? It's a zero, and you oh. should go work at McDonald's. All right, it's time to it's time to pack up, all right, the, the equipment, and it's time to go work at McDonald's. Here, I'll, I'll give you a, a one-way ticket. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Let me be the first to say congratulations. You've recently been hired by the McDonald's Restaurant, one of the most successful restaurants in America. If you are watching this video, then it means you're already familiar with the phrase poop. Poop? Yes, poop. Presenting original, unlistenable music. Ah, poop. That's right, Mr. Squarepants. We accept all kinds of new applicants. Take this goofy yellow figure, for example. He originally wanted to be a SoundCloud rapper. You had to move away from people that miserable don't want to lick you. I ain't gonna sit with you, ain't gonna talk to you, ain't gonna get with you. Or take this squid, for example. 
he aspired to be an independent musician. Dog. As you see, McDonald's will accept you no matter what circumstances you came from. We are so happy to have you on board, and thank you for choosing McDonald's. Ed Sheeran, welcome to the McDonald's family. We're very happy to have you here. Uh, you're gonna fit in very well. Yeah, pop more like poop, exactly. Okay, well, coming through with a kick. Okay, good ass. Dude, this beat's got some fucking flair, dude. Good flow. Fast pace. Okay. I'm a big fan of what I just heard. The production is stellar. Every switch up, like, the beat's fucking incredible. The synths that came in there were amazing. The flow was great. Like, the, the way he was mixed in felt like it was, like, always very intimate and close. Like, like it was just like a sweaty club and just everyone's bumping into you. That was surprisingly good. I was waiting for it to get bad at some point and it just never did. Please don't tell me this is reggaeton. It's definitely reggaeton. Singing's not great. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I think I've heard enough of this song. This is fucking horrendous. Send him to McDonald's. I have a better place to send this. Uh, for, for making horrendous... Reggaeton was some of the worst singing I've heard ever in a reggaeton song. I sent you to a place worse than McDonald's. See you in hell. That was literally so fucking bad. Next song, Blinding Lights. This is a, good, this is a motherfucking banger. I love that everyone's in universal agreement that this is amazing. The lyrics are meh. No, they're not. They work very well in the context of the album. No, this, this song is absolutely stellar from the writing to the really passionate. And again, I mean, like the personality of Abel just shines the fuck through like a blinding light. This song really is a shining beacon in a sea of garbage. Okay. Okay. It's a weird kind of housey synth here. It's a really weird sample, but she's she's really feeling it. You can hear it in the way she sings. Okay, so this is an, a, a great example where I feel like I'm not a big fan of the beat, but because you can tell that Beyonce is literally feeling this song, like, literally through their soul, right? Like, you you can just tell there's so much passion in the performance here. It, it turns a beat that's kind of shitty into something that is spectacular. Smokey Soul inspired singing really tops the 90s house beat. There's something incredibly 90s R&B about her style, almost like Lauren Hillish. Oh shit. Dude, Beyonce working as her own feature on her song. I don't believe that's overstaying its welcome. I, I think there's a reason why this song is longer. And I feel like it's to, to make the soul of this track kind of more apparent. Break My Soul is an incredibly creative direction for Beyonce to go. Uh, something that I haven't actually heard her do. That I think she actually does so well. That, that it feels almost like ahead of its time. Whatever the fuck is going on here seems like it's bringing back the 90s and might be a new wave. You guys are complaining about Ed Sheeran reviving fucking 80s prom core. Oh my god, it's so overdramatic. This shit is literally so drenched in reverb, the entire track feels like it's just floating down a river. But like, instead of a river, it's more like a sewer drain pipe. 
All right. Reggaeton? Question mark. Ooh. All right. Got some flair. Nice synth in here, though. Good guitars. He's doing it a bit more for me. I mean, immediately. I mean, at least the person can sing. Yeah, a really catchy build-up, too. Ooh, catchy way of integrating the reggaeton into it. Yeah, this is much better. Yeah, I don't hate reggaeton, but I hate the oversaturation of reggaeton cheaply done for numbers. I'm forcing myself to enjoy this. You know why I like this? Because I don't have to force myself not to enjoy it because it's reggaeton. It's literally the exact opposite. This outro is kind of unnecessary. Oh, ooh. Oh my god, that guitar! Oh, it's so good! This is literally the perfect improvement for what I look for in reggaeton. This is like, from the last songs, they just did a horrible job at representing what makes this sound work. With reggaeton, it should be given the same sort of leeway to where when it's done really well, it needs to be recognized instead of just immediately written off. I think the production here is stellar, I think the singing is great, and I think that this is honestly uh, an excellent representation of, of where the sound can go into a great, uh, enjoyable, catchy direction. I'd give that a smiley ball. Tones are not, eh? Those claps, what the fuck? Is this like a Fifty Shades of Grey Part 3 B-side or something? Like, what the fuck is this? These claps are the worst thing I've ever heard. They're agonizing. Yeah, the clapping, they they were like, they were so proud of it in the first half. Let's make it go the entire second verse. Yeah, fuck that shit. Okay, that song was terrible. I'm going to give that a red headphones. One of the worst of the entire day. Uh, a great example of what not to do with pop music. Uh, getting very creative with these horrific claps that have nothing to do with the tone. Speaking of having nothing to do with the tone, the singing has no clue what the fuck it wants to be. It's so all over the place in a song with such a soft and like... Like such an ethereal sample of the which sounds fine, but my god, over dramatic way of singing just completely oversells it and it goes way too far over the fence and completely misses the tone and just sounds like fifty shades of gray garbage. Ghost by Justin Bieber. Always tomorrow. Touch some nights when I'm hollow. Oh, you're hollow, all right. This beat's really creative. Catchy chorus. Oh, what the fucking- Ew! Oh, I hate when pop music does that shit. More than life! And then, like, has to fill in the space. Like, you know that that little empty spot there is, like, supposed to be there so you can, like, actually reflect on the emotion? But instead it echoes it. More than life! Like, it actually makes me feel like they're- they're insulting my intelligence when they do stupid shit like that. My god. The acoustic guitar parts, yeah, the, the acoustic guitar integration is really nice. I get my ghost from California. That's that shit. Okay, Ghost is kind of garbage. I think that the horrendous production choices that do come in in the very beginning um, pretty much speak volumes on where this song is trying to overcompensate for the fact that Justin Bieber has no fucking emotion through this track. He just completely fails to deliver. Uh, sounds like a lifeless drone delivering what is supposed to be an extremely emotional track. Uh, completely killing any compelling elements of it. He is by far the worst part of this song, as the production actually sounds extremely expensive and has occasionally some shining moments where the bass comes through, the acoustic guitar kind of slaps in some areas, but man, does Justin Bieber fucking butcher that. I'm going to give it a red headphones. Dog. Probably about a three, like a solid three, though. I mean, not the worst thing I've ever heard, but... Dude, like, you gotta fucking at least pretend like you exist on this planet. Saria from Bra Brahmastra by Pritam is is a song in what the fuck? I was gonna say a song in Spain. Huh? What what is that? Is Bollywood? Enchanting table? <laughs> it's enchanting table! Bro, I feel like I'm listening to Disney original soundtrack, but like 
Oh, this beat is garbage. Bruh, I'm not listening to this shit. Dude, that is one of the most tame songs I've ever heard from India, and there are some bangers that come from India, dude. The people who really optimize that that amazing, like, I don't know, what is it? The, the way that they sing in, in some music where it's just so vibrant and feels like it's, like, flying off the page can be just something that is unreplicable, yeah. Um, but here, it is literally turned down to about uh, zero on the energy scale uh, with her uh, horrendous mastering. I'd give that a red headphones. Jesus Dog. Christ. La Bacata. Manuel uh, Torizo. Boom, 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 boom. Oh shit, Clash of Clans core? Okay. Who's to call me on your cell phone? Is that a violin? All right, this is horrible. This song serves as an example, a strong example, where maximizing production does not work. If this song was more stripped back and wasn't trying to literally, like, over-compress everything, then maybe it would have some level of, like, emotional impact. But my god, it literally just feels like noise. With a really boring chorus and nothing about this stands out. I give it a red headphones. Feels, honestly, kind of just terrible. This is music that sounds very uh, frequently in my country. I'm sorry that you gotta deal with this shit, man. Not good. Next we have another song that seems like it's in Spanish by uh, Chris MJ. Yo, Spanish Michael Jackson? It's reggae tone. I can tell by the, um, by the tempo. Yep. <laughs> Dude, that steel drum is ass. Dude, I can't. Okay, this is fucking horrendous. This is red headphones. This is... Literally the worst. Like... Seriously, this this is send to McDonald's court. It's an older song. Well, I understand why now I wasn't able to pick up on the fact that this is uh, this is an old song because this sounds like every generic like B-side fucking Calvin Harris track that ends up becoming a hit. Cole's background music, yeah. I really don't like this breakdown. Goofy eh collection of sounds. Oh god, this bridge. I can't do this shit, man. I can't listen to it anymore. This this is um. Honestly, I, I really don't like this. I, I think in terms of Calvin Harris hits, this is one of the weaker. Um, it, it feels really thin, like or, or just like super compressed. The production isn't great. It has a lot of things just kind of thrown in, uh, supposed to make you feel a vibe with these goofy sounds in the middle here, and I just don't love them. Dua Lipa's kind of having fun with it, and the chorus is kind of fun, but I don't know. It's kind of butchered by the fact that I just don't think it's super well put together. I'd overall say it's like a 4 out of 10, though. I'm not nearly as offended by this as, like, many of the other tracks today, but, man, I just have really nothing, nothing to say about this. Next song, Vegas, from original movie picture soundtrack. Oh, Elvis, okay. Okay. Sheck West sounding type beat. Yeah, Vegas sounds, uh, here, I wrote this down. Doja does not sound very inspired here, works with Elvis shitting in the background. That's about all I gotta say. You know, Elvis taking a dump, him really squeezing to get the shit out, this song probably, uh, probably slaps. All right. <laughs> Sunroof by Nikki Yor and Daisy. <laughs> Literal elevator music. Like, not even subtle about it. Summer reproduction works pretty well. Fun production here. Nice little piece. Honestly, really good little moment. This guy's put out three songs. One of them is this. And it's... Yeah, that screams industry plant. All right, that was um, that was unbelievably uninspired, designed to literally just be radio filler. 
basically someone said, I want to make a song that feels like the summer. Um, I got my head out the sunroof, literally called sunroof with the summery vibe uh, designed to fill a radio spot. That being said, the production's stellar. Really well produced. Whoever did this beat was very passionate about it, and even though it's made to be super generic, I gotta I gotta admire the uh, the execution coming through and actually kind of sounding uh, pretty bright. I'd give it a shrug. I've been a throw up the sex in a oh first class by Jack Harlow. Uh -huh. Sweet 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 seam. Pineapple juice. I give a sweet. Sweet, sweet seam. Sex in a. Uh huh. That's unless I am. Okay, I'll confess I am. Oh, Go what the fuck? This is one of those moments where silence is awkward, okay. dude. Fuck this song. This is red headphones. This oh. song is fucking horrible. I think the chorus is completely insufferable. It's really stupid, and like someone said, it's also catchy, which is just the worst combination. It's memorable for all the worst reasons, with just. Horrendous lyrics and a really unlikable, disposable attitude. It is one of Jack Harlow's worst songs, and the fact that this is a huge hit still baffles me. All right. Um, Post Malone. How many Post Malone songs are you? <laughs> ah! Bro, Bad Bunny's album has been here on the global charts for literally like so fucking long. Post Malone has one track. One track that's stuck around is because of Doja Cat. I like you. Production is so horseshit, dude. What happened? Oh, Fuck this shit. Literally, like, are you kidding me? Like, are you kidding me? Why is the production so fucking bad on this album? Like, this was the last album. Dude, the bass is so nice. Everything is so well mixed in this shit. What the fuck happened with this new album? That bass is so shit. Wow. Doja Cat actually sounds alive here. The Vegas song sounded like a paycheck. This actually sounds like she's having fun. It works better for Doja because this beat sounds like a Doja Cat pop song. Just like that or Kiss Me More. I Like You is a mess. The beat really sucks for Post Malone, but I feel like Doja Cat, like, call, like, like, my god, it sounds like she's so happy to be there recording a song for Post Malone. Like, the passion in her performance completely saves this track and sounds amazing. Seriously, her verse is so fun. She brings her lively personality into the track and honestly saves it for me. Um, but I still hate it because Post Malone, my god, that shit is so bad. Seriously, like a fall from grace here. Next, we have a, a new song from Billie Eilish that I've been meaning to listen to. Uh, this is called TV. It's off of a new EP, a two-song EP, I believe. So I don't have to watch you leave, but on Survivor just to watch somebody suffer. You gotta be shitting me, dude. Like, this is... Is this not ripping off Phoebe Bridgers? Billy fans need Billy Eilish needs an OnlyFans. Bro, you down bad. That's self-exposure right there, man. My god. Claps are cheesy. I think that they're supposed to represent that everybody's kinda in the same boat right now. No, I think the fucking crowd the fucking crowd part is supposed to be like this is uh, Billie Eilish pretty much telling her personal story of what she's going through. Uh and, and it's actually done with a matter of show not tell which I'm always a big fan of. In fact, this song uh, slowly won me over. Like, I wasn't crazy about it when it started, um, but the lyrics just feel very relatable. It's it's honestly the same sort of appeal, like I said earlier, with uh, Phoebe Bridgers, right? Where it's doomer bullshit. It's pretty much, I'm, I'm a millennial. They're overturning Roe v. Wade. Maybe I'm the problem sitting down, sinking into the couch, existential dread, watching TV and not wanting to get up and do anything. This is not melodramatic. This is Billie Eilish going through her shit and making a really decent song about it. I'd give it a smiley ball. I think it's actually extremely well made. It's definitely very different from the stuff that we've heard on this playlist. I mean, it's certainly here because, you know, Billie Eilish is popular, uh, but, I, but I don't think it's, you know, it's not a pop song. 
How can I be homophobic? My bitch. Next song's called Doja, but it ain't Doja Cat. How can I be homophobic? My bitch is gay. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Pause. That's the opening line to your song? That's the opening line to the song? Hitman in a top chat, see a man topless, even a stick is gay. Hugging my brothers and say that I love them, I don't sleep that way. I can't fucking believe what I just heard. I, I can't believe that's a real song. I, I am entertained by it. Anyways, like, it has a gimmick, and then it has a verse that's kind of boring, bringing it back to this gimmicky chorus. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of torn on it. I give it a shrug. Again, I appreciate good novelty, and it has its moments, but I'm just, I don't know, tone is a little bit weird. Okay, this was, this was actually a decent song on this album. This is Jimmy Cook's from Drake. Still, it's Drake, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Life. Life is the only thing we need. Good, but it's safe, Drake. Good? Yeah. I have a theory. Like, like he knew that people would listen to the boring album and then get to this song, and then they'd be like, Yo, Drake is back on his bullshit, dude! Oh, I could tell her head good before I even know. Bitch on Vogue. Wow, incredible. Rest in peace to Drama King. I, I recently heard this song on the radio, and I literally thought he said, Rest in peace to John McCain. Like, it literally, if if you don't have the lyrics right in front of you... Rest in peace to John McCain. Who's John Nigga McCain? Gotta I don't know, Google it. It does, right? Gotta okay, finally, the song's starting. Yeah, Drake fell off. I'm giving that a shrug. Even the best song on the album is still kind of boring, even though I do think that, like, overall, it does have a bump to it. The chorus is kind of okay. Uh, the, the switch up definitely sucks and doesn't feel deserved, but 21 Savage at least does an okay job at, you know, pretty much taking over. I mean, Drake just kind of says, alright, I'm done with this shit, fuck this, and he passes the baton, and then 21 Savage comes in, it's like, okay, it's kind of fun. And then Drake comes back, uh, with a chorus here that kind of puts it all together in an okay way. Next song, Late Night Talking by Harry Styles. Things haven't been quite the same. Dude, I like this Gatchy solo. I'll break your cans. Sometimes I need you. Sounds like a toilet paper commercial. Oh, fuck this shit. Dude, this song sucks ass. Harry Styles is literally so boring here. It's got such a horrible vocal sample that does not work with the tone at all. The sounds horrible. Um, the actual, like, duplication with the Dua Lipa sounding ass fucking levitate bullshit also is super apparent. Um, and impossible to ignore for me. I find this song to literally be so fucking boring. I give it a red headphones. Dog. I said I love you for life, but I just sold out. Next we have Bam Bam. I I've listened to this album before, but Bam Bam featuring Edge. Bam Bam. You got to be fucking kidding me with that name, dude. moments okay when the song was called bam bam i thought it was going to be some sort of stupid like fucking song about sex dude I i'm traumatized from the ybn demir album where the song was called whoop wham yeah we do that whoop wham it's good doing background vocals he does kind of work as like a lower register on this track how much you want to bet that ed took duolingo classes just for this song he doesn't even speak spanish on this song what are you talking about yeah nothing makes me think a uh, fun fiesta banger like ed sheeran showing up with uh, such a boring singer songwriter bullshit voice and style that just does nothing to complement the fun bouncy personality that camila cabello was bringing to this track and i wasn't even in love with her performance but at least she was trying to go for something fun i feel like ed sheeran's voice just dulls the experience dude like, it, it, it kills the vibe for me, making this song just feel extremely mediocre. Give it a low shrug. Oh, the production slaps. I just realized this is Elton John. I didn't realize that until just now. This is Elton John? The fuck? What? 
Hello? What the hell was that? Dude, this does not work. This is such a drawn out, like, this works so well with a piano behind it, but it just literally sounds forced into this. Yeah, this sounds like an unofficial song that would play, like, while I'm waiting for the next League of, Legend, League of Legends competitive match to start. I think this is terrible, which, by the way, uh, once I actually was waiting for one, and there was a uh, an interpolation of XXX Tentacion Sad, but, like, it was like this, like a dance beat and sung by, uh, sung by a, a, a woman. I was like, suicide if you, if I'm ever gonna let go. Uh, I'm sad I know ya. I'm sad I know ya. Dude, that was, that was some shit right there. Good times. Uh, yeah, that song sucks ass. I'm giving it red headphones. Oh, El Tan John, what the fuck is going on? Everything for it. Oh, it's another song in Spanish. Okay. Givenchy. Probably a designer or something. No. Okay. Hungry flow. Yo, this is like... Oh, those horns. Beat those hard. The lyrics are kind of stupid. I can almost hear it just in the repetition. It's talking about trafficking drugs. He said Donda? The beat was really solid. I like the fact that the horns are very thin, almost making space for the extremely overcompressed bass, which actually works really well for this song. Um, but I think whoever is rapping over this is kind of just giving, uh, doing whatever. Oh, why? Why? Do, come on. The Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber would stay. Dude, this is like actually this kind of shit that would play in Zootopia. Some bullshit. <sighs> Ew, what are those kicks? Yeah, Kid Leroy is pretty much a budget version of Juice World that I honestly feel like nobody asked for. I mean, certainly the demand was there, you know, but uh, yeah, he just kind of sneakily snuck, slithered his way into that spot. Uh, and brings nothing to the fucking table. It's so boring. And I feel like these two boring artists coming together, making a boring song that is, like, barely... I, like, I honestly find this to be, like, one of the worst, like, pop super smasher hits, like, that's come out in a while. I, I honestly despise this song. I give it a red headphones. Dog. Like, it's... It's so... It's so bad. And I... And, and this is... And I swear to God, this is coming from someone who's probably heard this song... Like, this is the first time I've heard this song in full. So I promise you, this is not coming from a perspective of someone who's overheard, like, like heard this song too many times. I've barely heard this song. It is horrendous. The singing is so over the top and yet feels literally so calculated. Not, not the worst song of the day, but certainly uh, annoying. It's like a two plus. Uh, Shakira. Oh, it's a Shakira song. I didn't know Shakira had some, some, some music popping off. Oh, it's in, in Spanish too. It's it's reggaeton. It's reggaeton. <laughs> oh, it's not. Oh, I got scared by the drum. It's not. Yeah, I see you, dynamic. Thank you. <laughs> I was juked. I, I got pranked. You gotta be shitting me. Now, I appreciate the attempt to stitch together these two styles, the, the pop style that uh, Shakira brings to the table, as well as the, uh, the reggaeton uh, style that this Alejandro guy brings, but... Despite the best efforts of this track, it comes together like two uh, completely different worlds colliding and sounding really awkward. Like it's trying to hit two separate demographics instead of genuinely trying to make a banger that works for both artists. Yeah, the, the chords are super boring. The instrumental just doesn't do it for me. I just didn't really care about Shakira's vocals here, not sounding like her best performance. Overall, I thought it was kind of lame. I give it a red headphones. Dog. Follow me left and right. I can feel left and right. Ch Ch Charlie Puth and BTS. 
Can we skip this one? Do we have to listen to this one? Are you fucking kidding me? Ew! Oh my god, this is so boring. Dude, this is mixed like complete horseshit. The autotune sounds so grating. Oh, this is so joyless. Oh wait, is this BTS? They're singing in English? Dude, this is so generic. See, this doesn't even work as grocery store filler music because if you're on one side of the grocery store, you're only going to be hearing... I can hear, hear it over here once, so it doesn't actually work, uh, unfortunately, you know? You gotta be at both sides. You gotta have someone at one side of the grocery store and another, like, tin can communicating in order to, to, to fully get the experience of this trick. Oh my god, this is, this is agonizing, dude. I mean, I will say that at least it's better than my universe with Coldplay. Red headphones. Dog but is it really though? It's not even catchy. In fact, this song sucks ass. It's a failed pop song. Seriously, this is this is terrible. Is everybody back up in the building? Not the girl I was or used to be. Right. That production is stellar, dude. Right. It's about damn time. Honestly, Lizzo's latest album's pretty alright. My mom put it on in the car the other day and it was fun. I honestly feel like that's the kind of like mentality you gotta go into with listening to that album. It's just it's not as nearly as ambitious as the uh, the, the previous project, but it has some bumps. Like seriously, Lizzo knows her way around a hook. Like she just comes out with some amazing hooks. Exactly, yeah, she has a strong personality and I feel like she gets a lot of hate. But like, I don't think it's warranted. Generic but catchy pop disco? Yeah, it, it, it's okay, it fills a niche. Yeah, the motivational bullshit is kind of eh. It's about damn time. This song 100% deserves to be on the charts, I'll give it that. I agree. She needs an OnlyFans? You're disgusting, okay? That's terrible. But... You know what I'm saying? But, um, Liz, th uh, this is not, <laughs> hey, no cameras. All right, no flash photography. Please keep the flash photography out of the chat, okay? This is not a, a, a cancellation exposure stream, okay? And you don't need to tell Tina, all right? Anyways, I think that About Damn Time is not Lizzo's best song, but it has immaculate production, an incredibly catchy chorus, and does the job. I give it a smiley ball. Hey, no, no Steven Spielberg. Okay. I ain't. Uh, oh, One Republic. Oh, fuck that. Oh, this song's gonna suck, dude. I'm sorry. Like, let me pause. If the last song you've heard from One Republic was uh, Counting Stars, then I'm sorry to tell you that, like, this is not going to be what you want it to be. I promise you. So they, they have not had a very good uh, last decade. Um, it's, it's been very ugly. I don't know what you've been told. Ew. Oh my god. Oh, that whistle. I rest my case. Are you fucking kidding me? Is this not the worst?
Like seriously, I've I've never seen such a soulless selling out like performance in my fucking life. This is so bad. I really do think it is McDonald's time for uh, for One Republic. They're making a jingle for McDonald's so that when they work there, they can be like, "That's my song." That that whistling. I'm sorry, I can't do this shit. This song is potentially the worst of the stream. I'd give it a zero. Dog. It's insulting. Like what the fuck? Yeah, there's always a place for you at McDonald's. Yeah, I feel like One Republic would be great for a for a torture stream. That was fucking unbelievably bad. I knew you be. I wish I knew. Bad Habit by Steve Lacey. I've been meaning to listen to this album. I'm not sure if I've heard this song yet, but either way, I'm actually excited for this one. It's kind of a... No, the vocal melody is kind of implementing like some emo elements to it, but like done really tastefully. Exactly, it's kind of bendy. I, it's not like, it, it feels very intentional. It's okay, people just hate shit that's different, you know? We have a lot of One Republic fans in the chat. If you are a One Republic fan, can you please type one in the chat? <laughs> See, we got a lot of One Republic fans here. I really love this part. Dude, that like... <laughs> yeah, killed him. Oh, hey guys, what's up? <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> All right, yo, so that was not a prank. That was not a joke. Whoops. So baby, hold me closer in the backseat of your rover. This song's annoying for you since you actually live at Provenza. Hey, look, you guys have nostalgia glasses. Pa Passion Fruit was not that good of a song, man. You see why this song is popular? Uh, this sort of sound, it's its not doing anything new, but it's certainly a more wavy, low-key vibe than a lot of the other stuff we've been hearing. Uh, and it's a nice break from the reggaeton, though it is still kind of a, a bumpy house beat. It's doing something more chill, and I think it does a good job of kind of nailing that, while at the same time being a little bit boring. I'd give it a shrug. I really like this chorus. I, I don't love the song, but the chorus is really good. No, seriously, the chorus of this song is really good. The intro is nice. It's got a great instrumental. Uh, this is one of the more memorable or, or even like shining moments of this pretty mediocre album. Um, but then the verses of this song are fucking horrendous. They actually completely destroy the vibe and make it completely like it, they're, they're so nondescript. Does anybody give a shit about the verses of this song? Seriously. Like, does anybody even fucking remember what the verses of this song are? They are so dull and unmemorable. Yeah, there are verses in this song. Yeah, I wasn't exaggerating. No, the, the verses are horrible. When I first heard Heat Waves, I thought it was one of the worst things I've ever heard in my fucking life. In fact, I resented this song for so long, just thinking about how awful the autotune on that chorus sounded. It, it literally sounded like some SoundCloud bullshit completely out of place with the rest of what was playing on the radio. I mean, after you hear the entire album and you get the aesthetic that they're going for, my fucking God, like the... The rest of the album makes you say, oh, wait, no, this song, this song's okay. You know, go back to this. Why is it so high in the top 50? Because the chorus slaps. The chorus is fantastic. I, I think it's one of the catchiest pop choruses, like, of the last decade. And, and it's going to stick around for a long time. Um, though I still think that the rest of the song is fucking garbage. -io. What the fuck, dude? Why does it actually sound like he just takes a nap in between these choruses? Like, seriously. You know what? It's either we listen to three Bad Bunny songs or we listen to five. Since we're in the top ten, let's listen to five. If I hear a reggaeton beat, I'm skipping. Yep. All right, next! <laughs> Right, fair enough. Moscow Mule has a pretty catchy chorus, and it seems like Bad Bunny has a lot more personality than most of the other fucking reggaeton songs I've actually heard throughout this list. So I really do understand why it is that he stands out and why people gravitate towards him. Um, there's something about his performance 
through these beats that kind of shines through in the same sort of way that Post Malone does. Um, but that being said, I just find the reggaeton beat to sound really dull and boring here and unnecessary. Even though I know that's kind of Bad Bunny's thing, it just doesn't super work for me on this specific track. I'd give it a shrug. This is like when Eminem has a female feature, right? You know, before rapping about, I can't tell you what it really is, cause I can't explain my feelings. Oh, that's a, that's a chunky reggaeton beat. I like that. It's different. It works better slowed down. Great production. I can definitely see why this stands out, even without speaking the language. You, you can just hear the passion. Um, I thought that was a significant improvement from the last song that I heard. I'd give that a smiley ball. I thought the reggaeton beat was really tastefully integrated and done in a way that was interesting. Uh, yeah, it, it's different. Plus, the song felt very emotionally charged. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a Drake song. I like that each one of these reggaeton beats does sound distinctly different from the last one. The drums are different. It makes it so that it's more tolerable. Exactly, it's fun. Feels like uh, Bad Bunny gives also super passionate performance. Effecto is fun, uh, but effectively, I don't want to listen to the last 50 seconds of this. Why? Because I get it. It's good. Smiley ball. I, I feel about the same with this track as I did with the last. Like, the tone is really nice. Next song, Glimpse of Us by Joji. She turned the rain. I feel like this song is good, but don't get the insane love. It's definitely a, a, a bit overrated. I'm gonna wait till the end to, to talk about this. I'm just gonna let it play out. It's a good song, but in my opinion, people talk about it like it's revolutionizing music um, when it's just a really good emotional slow song with a really catchy chorus. So I, when I first heard this song, was not completely sold, and I definitely was still kind of uh, putting Joji in a specific box, and I think I've been doing that for a while, but it actually seemed like this is finally the song that kind of broke that barrier for me, as it really feels like this is Joji taking everything that he's wanted to do with his music and finally kind of, like, like hitting the exact spot that he's been trying to hit since the very beginning. I think that this is by far the best ballad that Joji has ever done and one of the best ballads I've heard in the last decade. Um, he, he basically, again, like, this, this one kind of took a while to grow, uh, grow on me, but I, I don't think it's overrated. I think that it's actually extremely well executed, and the fact that it does hit such a euphoric high, while, again, the, the, the actual tone is taken so seriously, uh, the, the piano is so beautifully integrated, and the, the humming, the, the harmonizing is so wonderful it it honestly makes for a near proof a near perfect tune i i think that this is uh joji's probably best song and one of the most stellar ones uh to get popular in a while and i do believe that it's popular because it's so good not because you know it's joji i i really think that he knocked it out of the park with this one yeah yeah you know i was always a fan of this song you know it, brad saying they liked it didn't really change my opinion you know, I, I i used to be you know I, you know me i'm with brad all the time you know he's, he's the homie you know we go way back i i used to send him uh, donations at one time you know we're, we're home uh titty me pregnant by bad bunny hey titty me pregunto si tengo muchas novias Oh, 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 the tempo change. How do we feel about this? You're allowed to like this one. You're allowed to enjoy this song. Nice. Dude, that's so catchy, dude. Holy shit. It was a nice switch. Definitely changes the tone a bit, though. I, I don't know. The second half isn't hitting as hard. I, 
I definitely have more like wiggle room when it comes to a song sort of having a kind of weak uh, ending segment like this as I don't feel like it fully matches the tone but luckily when you have a song like this where it really just impresses you smacks the shit out of you in the beginning it, it, it makes it so that like you have the option to just skip the song before it ends you know what I mean and, and I feel like when when a song could give you that level of joy it really push through with that level of personality and impress you that much with that big of a payoff with the reggaeton beat. I think that's worthy of praise. I say Smiley Ball. That's my favorite one so far of the Bad Bunny songs. Next song, Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush. Again, Stranger Things. So, yeah. Yeah, overrated. Yeah, I agree. Over is song is overrated. Um, actually, yeah, people only like it because of Stranger Things. I'm gonna deal with God and I get him to swap up places. I'll be running up that hill. Yeah, she self-produced this entire album. It feels more like someone taking control of their own vision and like doing it in the best way possible. Actually, really, I'm really impressed with that. This is one of those rare instances where a song has gotten popular because of a TV show and I haven't felt some sort of weird resentment for it. But like in this specific case, I was just like, oh shit, cool. This song's incredible. Like Stranger Things sure exposed it to a larger public, but the fucking song is incredible, dude. It doesn't make it overrated <laughs> because it's just, you know. No, I think that like Kate Bush being reintroduced to the mainstream and, and just the reception just as like a music nerd has been so fucking funny. It's just fun to sit back and see this bullshit unfold. I do. I did rate this as 65 on album of the year like three years ago or four years ago, I think. Yeah, I got to re-listen to this album. This shit outdated as fuck. What, what sold me again on Kate Bush, uh, when I first heard this song, I was like, oh, this just sounds like some, you know, typical 80s bullshit. Look, I did not have the same, like, understanding of Kate Bush or even this style of music that I do today. This song is fucking spectacular. It's a 10 for me. And I wish I had a, uh, the animation set up for, for doing a 10. Um, but, yeah, I think that this is amazing. And one of the instances, I feel like it's, it's a great example of someone self-producing for a good fucking reason. Because they, they really know where to take their vision and direction. And Kate Bush has such a, such a fucking incredible, like an incredible personality here. Just shining through with so many absurd ideas all coming through with creative colors. And it's one of the catchiest choruses of whenever the fuck 80s bullshit did. Like this chorus is so incredible. It's so anthemic. It's so empowering. It's so strong. It's a goddamn statement, man. Yeah, yeah. Next song is the last song from Bad Bunny on this pro uh, on this list, and it is Mi Porto Bonito. Bonito means bathroom, right? Oh, I'm thinking of Bornito. That's what Eminem rhymed with. Goody Q here. What the fuck? Why can't everyone do this? Why does everyone have to do the same copy and paste bullshit reggaeton beat? Like, when you can actually do it like this, where I, I expect it, but then the texture is different, and so it creates a different tune, it creates a different tone, it creates a different feeling. It works. I actually like it. Yo, wait, this is, I knew it. I knew it was the same baby face dude. It's the same guy who made that other song that, that was garbage earlier, right? Yeah, it was. The the horrendous singing, the the Dese Rebos. He's like the male tones in high. Cool beat, but man, this guy is a fucking party killer. Elmo rap? Like, shout out to whoever the fuck produced and worked on that crap, because it's it's stellar. Like, it's up to par. Um, that song sucked ass. Red headphones. Dog Look, this Kincho, whoever guy, this shit garbage, dude. Not my thing. So this is pretty much the number one if it wasn't for this crazy song that seems to have just kind of done a sweep over the entire uh, list, which is, uh, yeah, whatever this final track is, uh, as it was. Here we go. Mary, we say to you. Hey, Macklemore, can we go thrift shopping? Sounds like post-rock. It sounds like crunk rock, actually. 
There have been pop songs even on this list that feel like with many listens, I've still loved them. Like, they've stood the test of time. Blinding Lights is what I'm specifically talking about. This does not have the same power that Blinding Lights does. It's not going for it, but I mean the power of replayability. This shit gets stale and obnoxious. I cannot stand this shit. No, I don't think this was made with TikTok in mind. I, I think Harry Styles is just that boring. As it was, was not that offensive when I first heard it. But it actually is one of those songs that I can, like, I can admit my resentment towards the song does come from hearing it so many times. I haven't even, like, I don't even listen to the radio that much, but just the, the times that I have heard it, it feels like it exponentially grows more annoying. I just don't like it. I think that it's all watery and, and kind of just flimsy and shallow and just doesn't fucking work for me, dude. That, 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 I don't know. I, I, I. I'll just stick with I don't like it. I give it a red headphones. Not the oh. worst of today, but eh. We the best music! DJ Kelly! This guy's the new flow rider, I can tell. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Worldwide! Miami. Dale. Just because it's Spanish doesn't mean it's pit Ooh. Wait. Hold on. You hear what I hear? Now what's wrong with that? Boy, oh boy, I love it. Where the fuck? Yeah, I, I feel like the fact that this is a number one hit is affecting my enjoyment. And it's one that I feel like maybe coming back I'll enjoy more. But I honestly kind of dislike that. I thought that the guy singing... Didn't have the same charm or power that the last song did, and the production felt like it was really pushed back to just be as kind of shimmery as possible, which didn't feel like it did anything for me. I'd give it a red headphones. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually going to end it here. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I will have the final ranking in the video, and if you're watching on uh, the, the vid, the VOD, then it's going to cut here. Why didn't it cut? All right, time for the final ranking. At the last place here we have is I Ain't Worried by One Republic. I said Counting Stars. I didn't even write the band name right. Uh, yeah, this is this is them at their lowest. Then we have the BTS and Charlie Puth song, which is literally just a failed pop song that hopefully doesn't go anywhere. Then we had uh, Kesaria with Pritam, which was the Bollywood kind of Indian crap. That I don't understand where that is, what that is, but it's not on the charts anymore. Either way, no. Okay, then we have Jack Harlow with Sweet, <laughs> Sweet, Sweet Semen. Terrible song, seriously, garbage. Desiree uh, by Ra Alejandro, uh, or I think it had a feature on it too, which was the guy who I didn't actually write down here. Um, yeah, that song was a baby voiced weird reggaeton and I wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, and then we had Middle of the Night with L.A. Duhe. Uh, also, yeah, this was a Fifty Shades of Grey type weird song that sounded like something that would come up uh, during the Thirsty ranking video. And we had another whatever reggaeton song here. Then we had more reggaeton bullshit. I wasn't a huge fan of the reggaeton stuff. Then we had uh, Cold Heart, which is the awful El Tan John uh, interpolation of his own song. This thing was a disaster. Really weird, awkward tone. Didn't really work. The Shakira song was also a big disappointment. Didn't come together at all in the slightest. Late Night Talking by Harry Styles is just a really boring song. I ain't got time for that bullshit. Then we had uh, the Hotline Bling's Clash of Clans song thing with La Bacata uh, Manuel. Then we have Stay by The Kid Leroy, one of the worst super mega hits in a while. This song is obnoxious. Post Malone, I Like You is horrifically produced. Definitely worthy of being down on this list. We have JB, The Ghost of You, uh, or just called Ghost. It has some really awful production choices, though the overall production of the track is still really solid, so not all completely bad. Mi Porto Monito is the baby-faced crap, right? Wait. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay. And then we have the Bizrap one, which was the number one hit, which did nothing for you. Fuck. Mi Porto Monito was uh, Bad Bunny. It was the song that had that baby-faced feature guy, and I just wasn't vibing with him. But I will say the song would probably be bumped up a little bit if I was to rescore it, um, as I feel like the beat does kind of carry. 
Uh, then the Bizrap, the number one hit, just did not do anything for me. And as it was, is just as it is. Kind of dull. Until I Found You was reviving 80s prom course, slow track, uh, TikTok course song, not a big fan. Then we had the Ferrari one, which was uh, catchier and more enjoyable than some of the others that I haven't enjoyed. Sunroof, same for that. Not very descript, but enjoyable enough. Moscow Mule was probably, yeah, definitely one of the weaker Bad Bunny tracks that was on the charts. Uh, Dua Lipa One Kiss was one I had more expectations for, but the overall mix was kind of shitty. Bam Bam, Bam by Camila Cabello is still kind of catchy and fun, though extremely mediocre. Doja Cat Vegas was also just super mediocre performance. Speaking of Doja, we have Central C with Doja, which is pretty much a gimmick song that, you know, it kind of works. A big surprise here was that Shivers by Ed Sheeran was as high as it was, but I actually ended up enjoying the track, even though the lyrics kind of suck. Uh, I think the beat's fantastic, and it just kind of brings me back to that PS2 era gaming with the uh, with the plucky whatever. It sounds nice. Then we have Provenza by Carol G. This one was just a solid house beat, but overall mid, I don't know, I, I kind of liked it. Uh, Givenchy Dookie was that one song that just, it's, it's a rap song. It, you know, it just barely made it here under the radar not very descript speaking of not very descript we have jimmy cooks with jimmy cooks because i didn't write that it was a drake song because i forgot while i was listening drake drake lost frequencies where are you now was actually surprisingly fun uh one of the better bangers here he waves by glass animals has one of the catchiest choruses but one of the weakest a set of verses ever lizzo about damn time is just kind of hard to criticize as it's just joyful the chorus is fun it's good energy but not the best thing lizzo has done Biggest shock on this list probably is the Russ and Ed Sheeran song, which I would say is still really solid. Russ's performance is really good, and Ed Sheeran just fucking kills it out of nowhere. It's one of the more memorable songs here, and if I was to rescore it, I might even bump it up more. Uh, Bad Bunny Effecto is one of the better ones uh, here. I believe it was the slow, slower track, or I don't know. Either way, I might be misremembering. Uh, it's either that or the Lin uh, Lindos, which is the next one under. Still pretty good. Uh, Mami by Becky G was actually a pretty unique reggaeton song that I didn't mind all that much as I thought the beat developed in a really interesting way and it also had great vocals. Billie Eilish TV starts off the tracks that I absolutely loved as this track has some incredible writing. Really reminds me of what I loved about the last, um, the last Phoebe Bridgers project. And then we had the Biz Rap song, the other one, which I liked a lot better. Uh, this one had so many switch-ups and an incredible rap feature and just truly amazing production. Break My Soul by Beyonce is wonderful, and I cannot wait to see where they go from that. Uh, this Pregunto song also grew, but not this much. It's misplaced. It actually needs to be like, yeah, under Billy Eilish TV, so let me just do that. I forgot to add it, but Steve Lacey's uh, Bad Habit is an absolutely fantastic track, something that has a lot of creativity to it, uh, risk-taking that totally pays off. Uh, should be placed between Glimpse of Us and Blinding Lights. Blinding Lights is an absolutely incredible song by The Weeknd, one that you can listen to under any occasion, no wonder it's so popular. Uh, and then we have Glimpse of Us by Joji, which is his best song so far, an incredible ballad, and one that honestly gives me chills every time I hear it. Then we have Running Up That Hill, which is second place. Uh, I didn't write any notes because I was just completely vibing with this track. It's it's stellar, and it's number one. I'd actually put Master of Puppets below this. All right, Master of Puppets is second place, and it's Running Up That Hill is first place. Why? Because the catchiness of Running Up That Hill just kind of makes it more of a casual listen, though I do think that Master of Puppets is still stellar, unbelievable, one of the best metal songs of all time. And there you go. That's the ranking. Thank you everyone for watching. If you have any more suggestions for videos, you let me know. And that's all I got for you. Peace out.